What's up YouTube? Have you wondered about using the new Affinity to do vector designs? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben. I'm a media design educator and today we're talking about using the new Affinity, that's the green one, for vector designs. Now for this, we are going to be in the vector studio. So what used to be called personas are now called studios and we're going to be in the vector studio. We're going to try and design of course, a camper van, because of course that's one of my very favorite things to design. Now, I know that a lot of people are wondering how they get started here with Affinity, and I am working on a course that will show you the basics of all three personas. Right now, I still got that in production, but I'm hoping to have that out to you soon. For now, know that for vector design, the Vector Studio and Affinity Designer are very, very similar. So any of my courses down below that are for Affinity Designer, that's the old blue program, will teach you a lot about how to use the Vector Studio inside of the new Affinity that's the green program. But you might have to do just a little bit of translation when it comes to icons and things like that because a few things have been adjusted. All right, let's dive in and see how we do vector design here in the new Affinity. So here we are in the new Affinity and I am in the vector mode right now or the vector studio as they're calling it. And one of the things that I'm finding a little bit confusing about this is I'd spent so long teaching the vocabulary of the old Affinity programs that it's getting a a little bit tricky for me to always say the right thing. So these up at the top are studios. They are what used to be personas. So you have vector, pixel, and layout. And you can add more of them. Now I've turned off the Canva AI one because I don't want any of that AI junk in here anyways and I'm not paying for it so it doesn't do me any good. So I've just turned that off so I don't have to see it there. You can make your own studios though. So they used to be called personas, they're now called studios. What used to be called studios were these things on the right over here. We got color, swatches, stroke. These were all studios and I have a whole bunch of videos about the studios in each of the programs. These are now called panels and they can be found under the window menu now. You've got general, help, layout. There's a bunch of different panels that you can add in there. But let's try and do some design though. So let's get back to vector and we're going to start a new document. So I'm just going to file and new. And from here I can select whatever I want. I basically just want something that's going to be an RGB. I'll just choose a letter size here. We're just designing a little picture here. It doesn't really matter what size it is because it's all going to be vector anyways. can always resize it. There are more settings that we can do over here but I'm just going to click create document and here we go. Now the one thing that I think I forgot to do was turn this into an artboard. So let's go ahead and use the artboard tool on the left. That's the second tool down and we say insert artboard and now it should be an artboard. I don't love how dark the background is here so I'm going to right click here and I know that I can change this to like a medium gray and that's going to work a little bit better for me and being able to see what I'm working with. All right so we're going to make a van. So we're going to come down here. Shapes are under the rectangle right now because I haven't used any of the others but for the van we're going to want a rounded rectangle. A rounded rectangle here and this is all looking so much like a fan designer. It is very much the same. The icons look a little bit different. They are less colorful and they've changed their style a little bit but for the most part you're probably going to be able to figure out what they are. So we still have these orange handles. I'm going to zoom in, option scroll to zoom, and with the orange handles we can adjust properties of specific shapes. So in a rounded rectangle, that's the roundness of the corners. We're going to kind of round out right here. And now the next thing that we want to do is probably to be able to adjust the corners separately because we want this back one to be about this round, but we want more of a slope to the front one for the windshield. So I'm going to come to find the corner tool. This is the corner tool right here. And because these corners have already been rounded. Doesn't look like we can do them individually. So instead of using the rounded rectangle for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and use the rectangle. So I'll delete that and we'll use the regular rectangle tool. It's going to be kind of boxy, but then if I come to do corners, I can do each corner individually if I want. And I really want all of these to be the same and then I want to go rounder on the front one. So I'll bring these out to about 0.25. And then on this one, just on its own, keep switching to the node tool instead of the corner tool, but just switch back to the corner tool. We're going to go right here. Okay, once we're done with that, I'm going to duplicate it so that we still have this old shape here, but I'm going to bake this one. We go back to my corner tool here. I have the option to bake, and that's going to basically make the points. All right, so there's my van body shape. And now I'm going to make some wheels for it. So we're going to grab our ellipse tool here and we're going to drag out a wheel. 
Okay, now one thing that this has not been able to do in the past that I would like to be able to do is really work with the appearance panel. The appearance panel in Illustrator works much better than the appearance panel here in Affinity has. So we're going to see how that works. I would like to be able to use a single circle to create the wheel. I would like to be able to add multiple fills and offset those so that I can basically have a hubcap, a rim, and a tire all in one thing. And that just limits the number of paths that we have to have in the document. So I'm on this and I'm going to go to my appearance and I have a stroke and a fill. And I don't know that they have changed anything because it seems like very little has actually changed in these programs. It is very similar to what Affinity Designer was just a month ago. But we can't add a stroke or a fill. And I may just not understand how this works, but it doesn't seem to function like Illustrator did at all. So with this, my fill here, and I'm gonna go to swatches, and I'm just gonna go to gray. That empanada swatch set is for the course that I'm working on right now, which will be coming out shortly, hopefully not too long. So let's go ahead and make our hubcap, and that's gonna be our fill. So that's the very middle of it. And of course we can add a stroke, and that's gonna give us the tire, but it doesn't give us much more than that. So let's go to our stroke here. And with our stroke, it's already black. So what we want to do is raise up our width here. And we don't want it to stick outside, so we're going to align it to the inside. Then I want to be able to get the rim there as well. So we're going to try this by adding a, another stroke, I think. We could try a fill, make sure you're selected on it. Okay, we're going to try to add a stroke here. And the stroke is going to sit on top. If I come here and I say, I want to make this stroke white. And then I'm going to make it bigger. Oh, let's make it actually white. It looks like it went not all the way to the white. Okay, so now I have two strokes. And this one is currently set to being on the outside, but it's still covering up part of the black. And what I really want is for it to actually be all the way on the inside. So I'm gonna try this contour tool, which is what should do this, but doesn't seem to be able to. All it does is offset the total of it. So instead of actually offsetting just that stroke, it just offsets the whole thing. So I think the only way for me to really do this is maybe to bring that underneath and I could switch this one to black and I could switch this one to white. And then maybe if I put the black on top again, it's really just like you're kind of hacking it at this point and it, it shouldn't be that hard. I should be able to manage the offset of each of these individually. So that's just getting too, it's getting too big because I have to push it on the outside. I can't just set to the inside or they'll kind of compete with each other there. Let me try this though. So, okay, if I set that to the inside, I mean, at least we're getting close there, but again, I don't think anything has changed. I have no more capability here than I had before. Okay, but that's not the most critical thing, obviously. There's a lot more important things than being able to use the appearance panel because you can just use multiple shapes to achieve what you need to do. It's just kind of funny that they haven't fixed that yet. Okay, the problem with using strokes is that the scaling gets really weird. So there used to be a setting here to scale stroke with object. There it is, it's still there. So then probably need to set that for each stroke separately. So let's try this one and this one. Okay, so now our scaling should be better. Yep, okay, so we need some beefy wheels on our van here. And now we gotta add in some windows and we kind of want this to be a two-tone van so we're going to need to find a way to split this shape here. Just for fun, I think we'll go ahead and try it with the knife tool. We still have the shape of course saved, always do that. And we're going to try and find the knife tool here. It's under the pencil tool. Don't know why that knife tool is with these but we'll try the knife tool here. We really wanna just slice this in half basically. It's hard to get it super smooth there. I might need to turn on the stabilizer here. And now we'll have the rope mode. Nope. And here's our smoothness. We're gonna smooth that way out. Okay. So this stabilizer here, the window mode worked a lot better for that. So now each of these shapes should be separate. We can have our two tone going on here. So just so we can see that, I'm gonna change my bottom half to be darker. All right, so now let's make some windows here, which are of course going to be rectangles. 
But these ones we can probably do as rounded rectangles actually because we want them to be rounded and we want them all to be rounded the same, at least in the back. So we're going to put these in. Volkswagens are basically just rounded rectangles. You just have a rounded rectangle with rounded rectangles inside of it. And that's similar to Apple's products are all rounded rectangles, rounded upon rounded rectangles. For some reason, people just really like the shapes around rectangles. They're great design shapes. But we do need to do something here for our windshield. We have to do something. So for that, I think I'm going to need to duplicate this so that I can actually build out a shape that's similar. So I'm going to take a rectangle here and I'm going to do this. I just want to get the edge there so that it will match up. To do this, I'm going to use the Shape Builder tool. So the Shape Builder tool, obviously this came up in Affinity 2, we got it, but we waited for it for so long and finally got it. So it's not new, but it still feels new sometimes. But it seems to be actually working a little bit better. The option to delete seems to actually work now. And I had a lot of trouble with that in Affinity Designer where I couldn't get it to delete properly. Okay, so now we're going to scale this guy down so that he matches the others. And when we did that, we got these harsh angles on the corners here. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that with the corner tool. We're going to smooth out our corners so that we aren't so rough. Volkswagens don't really like rough edges. There we go. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. And now we want to duplicate this again. And now what we really need to do is delete out these windows so that we can have a pass through here. So we're going to select all of these and we can use the shape builder tool just like we did before. But we can also just use the subtract geometry command and voila, we've got it done. Okay, so the van is here. The van is ready to go for as far as its structure goes. But now we can add in a little bit of detail here. So we're going to add in, you know, some lights and bumpers and things like that. I'm just going to take a rounded rectangle here, draw out a rounded rectangle, and I'm going to make it pretty round for the bumpers here. I'm just going to use a rectangle to cut them in half just for fun, just to make sure it works. We're going to do an alignment on it. Align them to the center. Align to selection bounds center. Okay, so now this is centered and what I can do here, I can grab my shape builder tool and I can say I want this one and I want this one and I don't want any of these. Okay, now I've got these. And this shape I can put on as my bumper. I'm going to go ahead and make that a different color. Actually, I could have both those shapes, but it's going to be easier just to flip this. And then it gives me a chance to see the flip tool here. Great. So making sure that we're lined up there. We now have that on each side. And I'm just going to go like this. And that gives us our bumper. So now we just need a couple of lights. We're going to use the ellipse tool for this. And then we need a smaller one. There were two sets on the old Volkswagens there. On the back, I'm going to squish this a little bit because it was more of an oval shape on the back here. Again, it's pretty easy. This is pretty much Affinity Designer. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. And now we're just going to add in some color. Color should be fairly simple to do. Should be pretty much exactly the same as it was before. So we're going to go in here to the swatches and just go with colors. We're going to go with one of the green bodies here. I'm going to switch this to showing it as sliders and HSL. I really want to just tune down my lightness here, saturation slightly. For the top, I want it to be white, but I'm currently on a white background. So we'll need to make another background for us. Just give me a rectangle here. And we're going to make this a blue color. And then we're going to see if we can send it all the way to the back. Command shift bracket. Command bracket? No. I could do this from the layers panel, but I would prefer to do it from a keyboard shortcut. So I can do move to back, but no keyboard shortcut there. So now we just color in the rest of these. Okay, so a fairly simple illustration here, really quite easy to make. Everything seems to be the same as it was before. So there isn't much that we need to really learn here. I know that they put in like the image trace tool in here, but that was never something that I was really missing. I'm just looking through these tools to see if there's anything else that we need to try. So that's the icons changing a little bit. Everything looks familiar. Everything seems to be very similar. I would say that if you go and use any of my old courses, you should be able to do anything in those courses inside of this program. And the only thing 
thing that might be a little bit different is just what the tools look like, but everything should remain pretty much the same. Otherwise, as far as the Affinity Designer vector stuff goes, there really hasn't been much change yet. So hopefully we'll get some bigger updates and get even more new stuff. As we dig around, we may find that things have been adjusted here and there, but for the most part, it's the same with slight interface changes, but mostly very easy to jump back in and see what's going on. All right, I hope you enjoyed learning how to do a little bit of vector design here in the new Affinity. Again, I've got courses for Affinity Designer that can help you kind of get up to speed. Those are available on Skillshare and on Gumroad. And of course, on Gumroad, you can always use the code YT15 to get it for just $15. And don't forget, I'm working on a brand new course that talks about how to use all three of these studios in an integrated way. So stay tuned for that coming shortly. Thank you so much for watching. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.